have this robot and we want to program it to travel exactly one meter and we can get to tell it how many Rotation. rotations the wheels turn so let's figure it out on rotation go ahead okay now we're gonna measure how much that was yeah. All right. Okay, so we've taken 10 measures and now we're going to figure out how to make it go up one meter. Okay, so in school you've learned about input output function tables and that's what we want to do here. We, we the input are the rotations and the output are the distances. So for any rotation, we want to know what distance it will travel. So what uh Distance. What rotations did we measure? What for which rotation did we get data for? I'm gonna One call. One through ten. Okay, so we're gonna call the input x like you do in school, uh, and the output we think it's a formula, right? You think from the data you've seen, you think there's a p formula. What is it? Times ten. So you think it's ten times x. So let's plot that. What do you think that's gonna look like? A line. A line, right. Okay, there it is. Now, now let's write down, now let's actually write down the data that we collected, which is, let's see, we got 10, 10 what else? 20.3, mm -hmm. 29.9, 39.3, 49.6, 58.5, 68.9, 78.6, 88.8, 99.1. All right, good. Now let's plot that. All right, that also looks like a line. Now, if if that is the correct function, then if I draw a line, if I draw that line that we did before, it should go right through the points. Now, does it go right through the points? No. It does not. Let's put it a different color. It does not go th right through the points. So. Um, maybe 10 is not the answer, so let's try another one. What do you What do you think we should try? Um, 9. 9, okay, let's try 9. Oh, what about that? Is that better or worse? Too far, and it's worse. Alright, so what else should we try? Uh, 8.5. 8.5? Yes. You think it's going to be better? Yes. Really? Sure. Okay, that's even worse. Oh. Alright, so what else should we try? 9.8. Ah, 9.8, that's better. Alright, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah. So what are we trying to do? When, when we, when, why, do you, why do you say it's better or worse? What do you see? What do you look at? Um, we look at if it's touching the dot. If it's touching the dots, right? So if they're if the line is far away from the dots, that means the difference is big. All right, so good. So the difference. So in statistics, we call those the residuals. So we're gonna uh, plot the residuals. I'm gonna call them R, and it's y. Let's start with the first function we did, 10 times x, and let's plot that instead. I'm gonna make it so that it's symmetric. Oh, I can have. To I'll explain this part later. All right, let's plot the residuals, and let's put a line at where. Where should these residuals be in the perfect case? Uh, zero. At zero, right? Okay, so they're not at zero for ten. That's not very good. So there's those that we want these distances to be as close to zero as possible. So you then like what, what was your favorite one of these lines that we tried? Nine point eight. All right, so let's change this. 9.8 and let's plot that okay is that better yes now what do you think is it can we make it a little bit better you think notice that all of the all these are almost all of them are bigger than zero how about 9.85 all right 9.85 so that they so that this goes up a little bit and it gets more in the middle so why do you think why don't you what let's let, first let's try it 
Okay, now that's much better. Now, why, why do you think it's it, they're never exactly zero? What's going on? Because we did some errors because nobody's perfect when they're measuring. All right, we have measurement error. Yes, also maybe the robot isn't perfect, but it's probably more us than the robot. Okay, so 9.85 is, a I think, a pretty good guess. Now, it turns out there's something more advanced that we're, I'm not going to teach you exactly today, but it's called least squares, and it was invented by... This famous, famous scientist called mathematician Carl Gauss, and he actually came up with a very nice way to figure out the best answer. He has a definition of best, and it's basically what it is: is you take these distances, you square them to make them all positive, and you sum them. So here would be the sum of r squared. And if we do 10, if, I'm going to show you that if you do 10, which one do you think is going to be smaller, for 10 or 9.8? What do you think? What? What's going to be smaller? Uh, 9. 9.8, right? So the sum with it, with 10, the sum of squares is 8.42, and with 9.85, which is your best guess, we're going to see that it's going to be better. See, it went way down. See how much better it is? So we could keep trying different numbers until we make this as small as possible, but there's actually something called calculus that lets us do that quicker, and um, we can use it, this program to get it. This is too advanced for you, but eventually you'll learn it, and this will tell us exactly what that number is, and it's, oops, what mistake did I make here? Let's get rid of this guy. There it is. 9.864416. Now we're going to put that into that robot and figure and see if it goes a meter. So what's the formula now to make it go a meter? What is, what is the formula? Um, the distance, which is uh -huh. that. Well, I mean, How many which is 100, 100 centimeters. centimeters. Times that. Times that. Time. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, divided. Oh, okay, divided by that. And this should be the number of rotations that we do to get to a meter. Let's see if it works. We make it travel exactly one meter. Let's see. Go ahead. Wow, perfect. 